from Millville, New Jersey, and reaching around the world. New Life World Outreach Ministries presents His Word of Power with Pastor Richard F. Myers. Join us in a time of joyful worship, anointed ministry, and dynamic preaching from one of our Sunday morning worship services. It happens here on His Word of Power. Purify my heart. Purify my heart. 
your presence. Come and purify us, oh God. This fire never sleeps. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It may be people are feeling the heat this morning. Inside and out, yes. I was out in it all day yesterday. God's the kind of fire that it burns, but it doesn't consume, just like that bush, right, that Moses saw. He's good all the time. The winter and the summer and the spring and the fall, and the good and the bad, he's good all the time. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, you are good to me all the time. Sing that again. You are good. You are good to me all the time. Yes, you are God. You are good to me all the time. In the good and the bad, you have always had my back. You are good to me all the time. When I'm down in the valley, God. Down in the valley, under the shadow of death, I know you are with me, you are my very bread. And when the mountains are shaken, and you level the hills, when tossed by the oceans, I hear your voice, peace be still. God, you are. You are good to me all the time.
Come on, let's get our Bibles open this morning to Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, boy, I really like Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. Then turn back to him again, I said, and tell him, I don't know what it says yet, but I really like it. First person who can quote it to me, I'll give you 10 bucks. All right, there we go. Not read it, quote it. Hallelujah. Let's come on. Let's get to the word of God today. Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. We want to begin reading today at the 11th verse. Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that everything that you have promised us, you deliver. 
You are not a false promiser. You are not a liar. You are not a deceiver. That God, the things that you say are yea and amen. And that, Lord, we can take them to the bank. We can take them against the enemy. We can take them in towards unbelief. And we can take your word at its word that it will provide for us exactly what you said it would do. And so I thank you for that now in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people shouted, Amen. Amen. Now notice what the word of God says here in the 33rd chapter, the 11th verse. It says something about the sacrifice of praise. And it says to them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. They shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. They shall bring the sacrifice of praise where? into the house of the Lord. So in other words, it's got something of power and something that assimilates itself with other believers who are all bringing in the sacrifice of praise. And when we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house, something begins to happen. And according to the word of God, it says, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land. When I read that particular passage or part of that passage, I began to think about what does that mean? What does that mean to bring the captivity of the land and to restore it? And I began to read and look up some other translations of it. And so I want to read those to you. I'm not going to read the whole things. I just want to read that last part. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith God. In the New International Standard, it says this. For I will restore the future, the fortunes of the land as they were before. In the message, it says, I'll restore everything that was lost in this land. I'll make everything as good as new. In the Amplified Bible, it says, for I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were at first. And finally, in the Living Bible, for I will restore the prosperity of this land to what it was in the past. And each time, that is what the Lord says. So when we bring this sacrifice of praise into the house of God, we bring it regardless of whatever's going on in our circumstances and around us. Because praise, the sacrifice of praise, requires active, activation regardless of what we're current, currently experiencing. And so as we bring this sacrifice of praise into the house of God and into the house of God refers to two things. It refers to us corporately here in the house of God, but know ye not, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you got to bring the sacrifice of praise into the temple where the Holy Spirit resides. And as you begin to do that, as you bring into the temple of God, the sacrifice becomes directional change. All of a sudden, your mind isn't consumed with what's going on. Your mind is now consumed in the one who's going to take care of it for you. Somebody say amen. amen. The second thing it does, according to what I've just read you, to you, it is a restorer. It makes everything brand new. It restores it back to the way God originally intended it for you. So all of you got to do is lift your hands up and offer the sacrifice of praise. You got to offer it in your time of confusion. You got to offer it in the time of your joy. You got to offer it whenever you need to release anything that holds you captive. So just simply by offering up a sacrifice of praise. And we learned some things about the sacrifice of praise already. Praise is called a sacrifice because it proclaims something. It proclaims, I'm trusting you, God, 
I'm trusting you above all that I see, all that I feel, all that I'm going through. And I believe that your plan for my life is intact just like it was when you first spoke it into existence. Can somebody please say amen? And here's the greatest part. When I offer the sacrifice of praise up to God, the greatest part of that is I'm declaring that my trust in you, Father, my trust in you is powerful enough to overcome what I see with what I don't see. Man, there's some truth there. You know, when God created the earth, he created it out of things that we do not see. And he made those creations when he spoke to the water, when he spoke to the land, when he spoke to the mountains, created the animals, created man and blew, blew, blew the breath of life into him. It was all created out of things that we didn't see. And so every time I bring the sacrifice of praise into play and into the current situation I find myself, I'm saying... I believe more in what I don't see than what I can see. You know, when I was just in the hospital and I was bleeding internally, and apparently I lost enough blood that they had to give me units of blood, the thing that kept me steadfast on God's word was the sacrifice of praise. I didn't know what was going on, didn't have any idea what was going to be the outcome, I just knew that if I could offer my trust in him, he would work all things for good because I was one of those that loved him. Can you say amen to that, please? And it's that simple. It's that simple. All I've got to do is realize that the sacrifice of praise is the praise that comes against my unbelief, my fear, my worry. Every time I issue praise, I'm coming against unbelief. Every time I utter praise unto God, I'm saying I trust you more than what I see. I'm taking your word, not for granted, but at its face value, and I'm declaring and decreeing that that's greater than everything else that's going on around me. And even though my head wants to go on tilt, and short circuit what's been planted in my heart through the word of God says, I'll praise you. I'll praise you. I'll praise you. I'll praise you. Now watch what happens when we do that. When we praise God, we can see. Let me tell you something. When I was in the hospital, I got all the doctor's report. You're bleeding internally, you're this, you're that, blah, blah, blah. We're going to have to do this. We're going to have to do that. I could see that. I could understand that. But greater is he that's in me. And you know what's in me? His word. And so when I offer his word back to him, he has the authority to fulfill whatever it is that I am declaring to him. And in Romans, I, I love this because I want to tie this in for you. In Romans, it says that God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they are, when I begin to praise, praise is calling those things that are not as if they were. So I'm praising God and saying, I don't know what the doctors think, but I know what God says, and I am healed by the stripes of Jesus and no weapon formed against me is going to overcome me. Therefore, I'm standing and declaring through the sacrifice of praise that I trust and believe you. Now, watch this. If God called, now listen to this. If God called those things that were not as if they were, and I begin to praise God, thus calling those things that are not as if they were, then the character of God has become my character. 
You need to say amen on that. Because as God speaks, so be it. I praise and speak, so be it. So the very nature of God and the very character of God that operates in him is now operating in me because I am now like-minded. And Romans says, be like-minded. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be thinking in Philippians like Christ thinks. Christ said, <laughs> I may be God, but I'm devoiding myself of that and I'm becoming the son of man so that all of God's children be can become the son of God. Did you get that? Watch this. Watch this because this is powerful. Jesus gave up being the son of God. He became the son of man so the son of man could become the sons of God. And that word sons there does not refer to only the male species, the children of God. You could substitute that for that. So God came down to earth himself. He came down, devoided himself. The Bible says in Philippians that he devoided himself he knew he was equal with God, but he devoided himself of that, took on the form of man so that man through him could take on the form of God. Amen. And the praising, the sacrifice of praise that I offer God is the substitute of faith for fear. Amen. Every time I praise him in spite of what's going on, I'm substituting faith for fear. 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 Every time I say I praise you, God, I don't understand this. I don't like this, but I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. And every time I do that, that fear that was trying to overwhelm me and trying to overwhelm you is driven out and faith begins to rise again. And as faith begins to rise again, the book begins to work for you. And you can declare and decree, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, not through hope, not through maybe if, if God really is merciful, but through faith, because God is activated by faith. He's not activated by need. He does not move on need. He moves on faith. If he moved on need, everybody in the world would be healed, delivered, set free. They would not be involved in all the sins of the world. He can move on need. He moves on faith. And when he moves on faith, faith is activated by praise. And praise becomes my thanksgiving. And by the way, there is a difference between thanksgiving and praise. There's a big difference, you know. So many times we say, praise God, give him thanksgiving. Well, they're kind of at the opposite end of the spectrum. One is the before and one is the after. The praise is before. Before I see the healing. Before I watch the manifestation. Before the deliverance happens. I'm praising him and saying, oh, I trust you so much more. I trust you so much more than what I see going on in my life. And then when the manifestations begin to start, I start offering him the thanksgiving. See, praise is the celebration of trust before the manifestation of the promise. So I just praise him. I, I was still bleeding, but I praised him. You're still in your financial woes, but you praise him. Your body still aches and has pain, but you praise him. You're not sure what direction you're supposed to head, but you praise him. Because you're testing fear out and you're allowing the fullness of that praise to do its work. And it becomes the celebration of trust while the manifestation is being completed. Can you say amen? You know what praise is? Spiritual insurance. It's spiritual insurance. 
Every time I praise God, I'm ensuring that my faith will overcome my fear. It's spiritual insurance. Every time I get a bad prognosis from the doctor, every time I get a call from a bill collector, every time something like that begins to take place, when I praise, it's my insurance policy that somehow God will meet all my needs according to his riches and glory. Somehow I'll be healed by the stripes of Jesus. Somehow this, let this mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus. Somehow. I'll be transformed by the renewing of my mind somehow, somehow, somehow. And then when I begin to see the manifestation, I can begin to give thanks unto the Lord because thanksgiving is the celebration of receiving the rejoicing of answered prayer. So now my worship becomes my thanksgiving manifested. Here's something God shared with me this morning. As I was looking over my notes, and God said to me something that really, really impacted me. He said, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is, is produced by the seeds that were planted and harvested. Praise is the sowing of those seeds. So every time I praise God, regardless of what's going on, I'm planting seeds of thanksgiving that will give thanks for the manifestation of what I'm believing. If you're with me, say amen, please. So now here I am. Over here, the Bible says, as I plant my seeds, I don't know how they grow up. Somebody comes along and waters them. Somebody comes along and fertilizes them. And then the harvest comes. So my praise plants the seeds and my thanksgiving is the celebration of the harvest of those seeds. If you're with me, say amen because we're getting into something that's really important. So praise requires faith and hope. Thanksgiving is your expression of gratefulness. So we've got this praise and we've got this thanksgiving. But somewhere tucked in all of that is prayer. So we got praise, we got prayer, and we got thanksgiving. Now, all you intercessors, I need you to hold on to your seat because I'm about to say something that's going to rattle you until you hear the explanation. So, Marguerite, grab hold of your seat. Uh, who else is here? Uh, Marjorie, grab hold of your seat. I don't want you flying out of here. So, we have praise, we have prayer. We have thanksgiving. Here's the statement I want you to hold on to your seat with. Praise is more powerful than prayer. Amen. You okay with that? Okay, good. Whew. Praise is more powerful than prayer, Pastor? Yes. Because God answers your prayers, but he dwells in your praise. Get that. God answers our prayers. But you know what? Unbelievers can pray. Only believers can praise. There's people all over the world saying, oh God, if you'll only heal me now, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. There's foxhole prayers. Man, you've heard about people in foxhole. God, you get me out of this, I'll serve you. They get out of it and they never do anything. But I'm gonna tell you something. Once you've tasted of the Lord and he said, taste me and see if I'm not good. Once you've tasted of the Lord, then the only thing you've got above prayer itself is praise. And when you're praising him, 
He indwells the praises of his people. If you need a scripture reference, it's Psalm 22, 3. So here we go. Whenever we pray, anybody does that, but only believers who've had personal encounter with Jesus himself can lift their hands up in the midst of a crisis and say, I praise you, Lord. I praise you. You know why a believer can't do that? Because praise is connected with Jesus. And without Jesus, there is no praise. Because praise is the trust that whatever he did on the cross, he did it for the purposes of you and I. Somebody please say amen. And according to the word of God, the Bible says that as I praise him, I am offsetting my unbelief. I am pushing aback all the fears, the worry, and the anxiety. And I am coming to a place where I have act activated my faith in what the word of God says. And the Bible says only faith pleases God in Hebrews Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek after him. Hebrews eleven six. And so here I am in the midst of my troubles and battles and struggles. I'm lifting my hands and I'm saying, I praise you. Maybe that's all you got. Maybe all you got is just, I praise you, God. I have no answers. I, I, I'm going through these struggles. I don't know where I'm headed. I don't know what's happening. All I do is this, Lord. I know one thing. I praise you. My praise buddy is right there. <laughs> Marvella and I both went through some serious things there in the hospital. She went through her deal and I went through my deal and we had a dancing celebration because we moved from praise into thanksgiving because God did what he said he would do and the seeds that we planted in praise manifested themselves. Somebody say amen, please. See, God answers our prayers, but he dwells in my praise because he looks at praise as faith. And every time he looks at faith, he's able to move on our behalf. Can you please say amen to that? So praise becomes the catalyst for our faith to reach for the hope of answered prayer. Wow. So I praise him, which really the statement that praise is more powerful than prayer is really kind of a misnomer because praise is prayer. Oh, it's not the kind that says, oh, God, heal me. Oh, God, deliver me. Oh, God, I'm praying for Helen. I'm praying for this person or that. Praise is, I don't know anything but trust in you. And to God, that's a sweet incense that comes to his nostrils that he deems as faith unto himself. Can you please say amen to that? So when we praise him in difficult times, we're expressing our faith and our trust in our heavenly father, even though we don't understand what's going on or anything else. So then now a question arises. If I praise him in the difficult times, if I praise him when we're going through a really tough time, the circumstances around me are all screaming, failure, defeat, overwhelming, overcoming. And I'm praising him then. I can understand that. But why do I need to praise him in the good times? I get praising him in the bad times because that's an expression of my faith. Now hold on because this really gets really cool right now. Why do I praise him in the good times?
In the book of Deuteronomy, you can just write this down and look it up later. In the book of Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, the 20th and the 21st verses, it says these words. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him shall thy serve. And to him shall thy cleave and swear by his name. He is thy praise. And he is thy God that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thy eyes have seen. Let me just read the beginning of the 21st verse again. He is thy praise. He is thy praise. Okay, I know I need him in the good time, in the bad times, but why praise him over here in the good times? Because he is thy praise. In other words, in the good times, my praise links my character and my nature to his character and his nature. So that when the bad times come, it's an automatic response of praise because here in the good times, I have linked with his nature and his character. And the praise that I offer in the good times is actually lifting him up to the position where I may draw upon the link between me and him through Christ Jesus, all the strength, all the power, all the hope, all the promise that I need when those bad times come. Can you say amen to that? He is thy praise. In other words, he is the praise that's in me. He is the indwelling Holy Spirit. He is the one that I can turn to. I don't have to turn outwardly. I can turn inwardly into the one who has residence on the inside of me. And that character and that nature overcomes everything that is in the bad times because I've planted the seeds of praise and worship so that in the bad times, I can reap the harvest and offer thanksgiving. Somebody say amen, please. And today, I stand here before you, knowing that the seeds of praise that were offered in the good times is what sustained me to be able to stand before you today and give thanksgiving. The reaping of the seeds back there, the character that has indwelled me, the nature of Christ that's in me, and it has overwhelmed me to the point that today I reap the harvest of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. And you know what it did? It removed me and removes you from the grasp of Satan and reestablishes the God power that's in you. You no longer have to be afraid of the devil. Somebody please say amen to that. You no longer have to walk in fear. Please say amen to that. You don't have to worry about your future. And you know, so many times, it's not about the big things. It's not about the cancers that invade our bodies. It's not about the sicknesses, in my case, the internal bleeding. You know what praise is about? It's about the little everyday foxes that try to come and steal your joy. It's the everyday little nagging thoughts that trickle in your mind that try to overwhelm you and cause you to to give up and quit and lose faith in the promises that God's got for you. It's not those big things. It's the everyday little things that nag at you and nag at you and push at you and prod you and push and prod and push and prod. It's that praise that removes you from the grasp of those things and reestablishes you 
the throne room of God. And now you understand how the Bible can tell you to come boldly into the throne room of grace in your time of need. Why? Because you've established the link with God through just simple praise. Just thank you, Lord. I praise you. You know what the most amazing thing about that is? It contains so few words, but has the power of the kingdom behind it. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Holy Spirit. Four words, five words for Holy Spirit. Four words that open the windows of heaven and pour you out whatever it is you might need. I didn't have to be affluent in prayer. It's funny because if we're praying at night, Helen's a prayer, Marguerite's a prayer. We start praying she covers the warts on your big toe. Amen. I run you through the car wash. <laughs> she remembers things about prayer that we're supposed to be praying for. I cover it with one. Take care of them all, God. She names you one by one. She names the wart on your nose the callus on your foot and she commands them to lose their authority and power over you. But when it comes, she, yeah. I know, the bunion or the corn or the what. <laughs> but when we both lift our hands up, when we both lift our hands up, Thank you. And say, we praise you, Father. Amen. 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 All the words fall to the wayside Amen. in the same power that dwells in her in intercession Amen. dwells in me. Amen. And I can exalt the Father with those four words. I Praise you, Father. And the moment I issue those words, listen to this carefully. The moment I issue, I praise you, Father. All hell trembles. because I've released the secret of kingdom power. Bow your heads with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what decisions you're making. I don't know what the adversary has trafficked in your mind. I have no idea. But this one thing I do know, if right in these closing moments of this service, you will simply lift your hands up to God and begin to say those four words. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Father. All over the building, let's just do that. I praise you, Father. Shoulders will be healed. I praise you, Father. Backs will be healed. I praise you, Father. The bills will be paid. 
I praise you, Father, the children will be restored to God. I praise you, Father, life will change dramatically for those that need a touch. I praise you, Father, promotions will come. I praise you, Father, love will be restored. I praise you, Father, fear will leave you. I praise you, Father, no weapon formed against you will prosper. If you just raise your hand, they're watching my television. Just raise your hand right now and just say, I praise I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Holy Spirit. Just praise him right now, and life will begin to change. Manifestations will begin to happen, and you'll see God's love and power and promise work for you. Father, as we just praise you this morning, I give you glory that what we have experienced through our relationship with you has indwelled into the deep recesses of who we are. And we are no longer what we used to be. We are new creatures in Christ who exalt you, who raise your name as a banner above every situation of our lives. And as we do that, God, your glory manifests itself. And we honor and praise you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stand up to your feet, Pastor Steve. Let's just give him praise. Hi, this is Pastor Myers. I pray you enjoyed our broadcast today, and I wanted to let you know that our church family would love to have you join us here in our sanctuary for one of our weekly services. Every Sunday morning, we have dynamic worship, powerful preaching, an awesome children's church, and we see the power of God as he ministers to his family. Our Sunday services begin at 11 a.m. Then on Wednesday nights, we have ministries for the entire family. We have adult worship and Bible study. It's a night packed with the presence and power of God. And that happens at 715 every Wednesday night. For more information about New Life Church, you can go to our website at newlifeoutreach.org. There you'll find all the information you need to be part of our great church. And you'll see what God is doing in the lives of our families. Until our family meets your family on our next broadcast, may God richly bless you and yours. Who is New Life Church and what do we do? New Life Church is a multiracial, multicultural church in Millville, New Jersey. There is supernatural ministry at all our services. And today you could walk out of here with a much lighter load if God would just give you something. This morning I had, I had uh, a gift that God uh, had just given someone and I didn't know who it was supposed to go to. In fact, there's no name on it or anything. And God said, don't worry, I'll show you. And today he showed us, here's a $150 gift certificate to ShopRite so you can go buy some food. Move it over, all over. You said for years you've been in pain. Come on, let's jump, dance, let's see what you can do. You can talk to her right there, there it is. There it is, there it is, right there. Pain is going away. Just sit there because as you keep doing this, look, look what's happening there. How's the pain now? Yeah, what? You mean the pain's all gone? You don't need that, you don't need me either. You were just up here in agonizing pain. You were just up here with all those problems. And now, come on, walk with me. Come on, walk with me. Come on, walk with me. Turn around. That's amazing, isn't it? You're free. Come on back here. How's it feel now? Does it feel all good? Thank God he just healed you. New Life has works around the world through our partners and outreaches. No, people want to accuse you. La gente te quiere acusar. People want to say things about you. Our mission outreaches reach around the world into 63 nations. From water well drilling to churches, Bible colleges, orphanages, elementary schools. New Life Church is constantly reaching around the world to share Jesus Christ. And New Life Church it there when disaster strikes. 
New Life staff also ministered at Ground Zero, Hurricanes Katrina, Sandy and Ima. We are helping with outreaches during the COVID pandemic. And our latest project, a leper hospital, clinic, home and church. Our banner, uh, uh, New Life Church. This is our church. New Life Church is an ever-growing, ever-reaching ministry that touches the entire family. We offer activities for men, women, kids and teens. We have programs to help the needy, outreaches to the community, and ministry for every member of the family. We take mission trips, trips to Israel, and join with our ministry partners to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Church life at New Life is full of activities, outreaches, dramas, and various ministries to meet the needs of the entire family. Our concerts, dramas, shows and special presentations reach our community with the message of hope. Thousands have come to these special presentations to be uplifted, encouraged and hear the word of God. New Life Church is truly a place of fellowship and family. It's a church where families flourish for all cultures, races and backgrounds. New Life Church the church of many colors. Why not come visit us? Perhaps even this Sunday.